So this is Super 7, um, it's Michael Lathe. And if we come round the lathe, at the back here you've got the first belt housing. This has two pulleys in, the fast on the outside and the slow on the inside. Um, and that sets your course speed measurement from the motor that's behind here. There are some oiling points on the motor which are not easily visible in the struggle to see them in this video, but when you get your induction I'll show you where they are. And then once you open the next case, this is the change gears for the um, screw cutting feed system. Um, and these can be interchanged in a number of ways which are described in the manual which is stored underneath. And all the configurations are listed inside the case. Let's go around here and open the top up. This is the main speed section. You start with your slow, which is your big to small, uh, your small to big. Finish with your fast, which is your big to small. If you come in a little bit closer, you'll see it's a back gear arrangement where you have this, which impinges into a gap. If you release that, the spindle and the chuck spin free of each other. And then this adjustment lever here can be pulled out and lifted up, and it engages some gears, which then mean that that gear spins something underneath which spins that gear much much slower and in the reverse direction. It's important to remember that it spins in the reverse direction. When you want to bring it back round you need to line up the tent with the nub on the gear, flip it round and that will lock back in. You've then got a lever here which tensions the belts for when you want to run and then this lever here actuates the clutch. If you look inside the casing here, you will see a brass disc which moves in when you actuate the lever and that's what pulls the two parts together and makes them spin when the motor's active. In terms of powering on the way, the first thing you should do is check that the chuck will move freely, it's not obstructed, and if you have a workpiece in the chuck that it's secure, I'd advise you to tap it lightly with the hammer, jiggle it a little bit and turn it, and before you turn the chuck on, you need safety glasses, which I'm not wearing at the moment, it's no workpiece, but in order to turn the machine on, you first start by pressing the power button. There isn't a no-volt release or an emergency stop, fix the age of the machine, and that power button will sometimes not lock and take several presses. You then come down underneath and you have a forward reverse selector. So towards the operator is forwards and you can hear that the motor just came on. Away from the motor is reverse and you shouldn't use that as a stop, you should always turn it off at the button as well. Once we've got the lathe turned on, as we described in the clutch, only when you actuate the clutch that it spins up. And when you're doing any work that doesn't require the, the blade to be spinning, or you're adjusting anything, you should turn off at all three points. There's a number of major parts. If we start from the top and work down, there's the, the quick change tool post, which has two points to attach a tool holder like this, which interlocks with this mechanism here, which is then locked by turning and unturning. There is a point on top which can be loosened to adjust the angle, and then it sits on top of what's called the top slide, which can be adjusted in terms of its angle and actuated in and out for turning purposes. The top slide then sits on the cross slide, which will go back and forth, and that is actuated there. The cross slide in turn sits on the saddle, the saddle can be actuated in a number of ways. There's a hand wheel underneath, which allows it to move back and forth quickly with the rack, which is quite fast. It's then this half nut on the lead screw, so that can be engaged by pushing down, and then the screw is engaged. The um, half nut, you can then turn the graduated hand wheel to feed the screw back and forth, and that will um, move the saddle in a more controlled manner that you can see as graduations. If you remember talking about the screw cutting gearbox, you can actuate that using this tumbler here and that will drive the lead screw directly off of the spindle and fixed 
um, speed based on the gearing. When you want to use the hand wheel, you need to disengage the top part of the gearing, otherwise you'll be trying to push the whole gear train round, which is usually too hard to turn by hand.